Good morning. service today. This is a special day that we come together to worship the Lord, and I thank you for being here and being a part of it. If you're visiting with us today, we're honored that you come and join us today on the Palm Sunday service here at Huntsville Park Baptist Church. I uh, would like to remind each of you for the children, uh, we'll be having an Easter egg hunt this Saturday at 2 o'clock, so put that on your calendar, invite as many uh, children to come as possible. We have a lot of eggs and things for them to and have a story. Uh, that we tell here uh, them about the meaning of uh, Easter. I encourage you to bring as many folks as possible. Also, the joy of be meeting, uh, is it still Monday? No, I'll meet at the church for a minute. The joy group needs to meet at their church with Jim, so please do so uh, right after the service. Uh, it'd be prayer for our egg hunt as well because we reach out to a lot of children that unchurched and a lot of families and homes that we're able to reach and, and touch during that time. Uh, so I need your prayers as well as your donations you give us. I appreciate you doing that. Uh, let us uh, begin with prayer this morning. Dear Lord, we're so thankful for uh, you here today. We thank you for all that you've done for us. I pray, Lord, that we'll continue to praise you this morning with our voices and our presence, our hearts, and I pray, Lord, that you'll just bless each home here today. And I thank you for letting us be a part of your life. And I pray, Lord, that you touch this service. In Jesus' name, amen. They looked at him and saw a simple man. Oh, 
Father in heaven, we're thankful for this beautiful day that you gave us and for the blessings, Lord, we've already enjoyed by being in your house today. We pray for Brother Milan now, Lord, as he brings the message that you've laid on his heart, and may we receive it, Lord, and uh, react accordingly. Thank you, Lord, for all the many blessings we enjoy every day of our lives. We ask in Jesus' name, amen. 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 If you have your Bibles, you join me in God's Word in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 19. Gospel of Luke chapter 19, as you're turning there, uh, there was a, uh, a little cross fell off someone's necklace, so if you're missing that, uh, if you'll get, uh, it'll be laying up here to front at the end of the service, so I encourage you to come pick those up. Uh, if not, uh, that'd be a good Christmas gift for my wife, so uh, just one way or the other. Uh, Y'all pick those up. I tell you, it doesn't seem like it's Easter already, does it? Seemed like we just had Christmas and started the new year. You know, I, I, they say that's a sign of old age when time flies by like that. But I, I know one thing about it. Uh, the Lord's coming up on us very quickly. The Lord's coming is quickly. Uh, would like to read one verse and then we'll back up a little bit. In verse 38 of this chapter, it says, Saying, Blessed be the King that cometh in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Blessed be the King. I want you to understand this morning that the whole message, the whole service, the song service, the preaching service, the Lord's Supper, our invitation, everything this morning is about the King. Everything is about the King. It's not about the preacher. It's not about my feelings, your feelings. It's all about the King. I don't know if anyone out there has, but I'm sure most of you out there have played checkers, haven't you? Checkers, everybody's played checkers. You good at checkers, William? All right. What about chess? Anybody ever played chess? That's that's real. Well, let me tell you, life is sort of, and I want you to understand, both those games can be played on the same board. Checkers and chess can be played on the same board. Both of them are very similar because they're on the same board. And checkers, you try to get crowned. And in chess, you try to protect the king. Now, I want you to understand this morning that a lot of us are playing checkers and we're not playing chess. Because in playing checkers, guess what? Who you're trying to, you're trying to take care of yourself. You're trying to go get crowned so you can get more power so that you can go after the other folks. You want to get crowned. You want to get them crowned as quick as possible. And that's what people in life are doing. They're wanting to get crowned. They want to get acknowledged. They want to have more power. What happened in the Garden of Eden, Satan came to to, uh, Eve and said, look, if you go eat that tree, you'll get crowned. You'll be like a king. You'll have more power. You'll have more knowledge. You'll be more powerful. You'll get crowned. Oh, she couldn't resist the temptation. In both of those games, checkers and chess, it requires some sacrifice. Now, in playing checkers, you may sacrifice a few things, uh, maybe uh, one little old checker over here so that you can get this other one crowned. Uh, it takes a lot of planning. It takes a lot of offense and defense. You've got to protect yourself as long as you are attacking. But folks, I think Christianity needs to be like chess. I think everything needs to be about the king. In checkers, it's not one king. Everybody wants to be a king. Everybody wants to be crowned. 
Unfortunately, in churches today, everybody wants to be a king. In life, everybody wants to be a king. But folks, I want you to tell you the truth. The whole world's messed up because it's not about checkers, it's about chess because there's only one king. One king. Now, in the game of chess, there's a lot of different kind of pieces, and each one of those pieces have a very important part of the game. Now, you think a pawn not very important, but I promise you a pawn has power. Has power. I'm telling you, you know, they say, well, I can go take that queen, but yet I may lose the game because the pawn has power too. Some have more power than others. Some can move one way and one, uh, uh, than other ways. I want to tell you, there's people in this church that have different kind of gifts. Every one of us can do different things, but we're all important. We're all important. We all got to be part of the same plan. There's a lot of times there's pieces in chess that you move to one spot on the board to protect another piece on the board. In fact, in chess, you don't want to lose any players, do you? You don't want to lose any, not a one of them. Sometimes you do. But each one has to be willing to sacrifice. Because the main thing is, it's not about me, it's about that king. The whole thing is dependent upon the king. We're willing to sacrifice for the king. We're willing to defend because of the king. We're willing to attack them to protect the king. It's all about the king. And this morning as we come together to worship the Lord today, we need to understand it's all about the king. And that's where we've come to in this chapter here in the gospel of Luke. Many times as Jesus did great and marvelous works, miracles, he told them many times, go and tell no man. Go and tell no man. Because it wasn't time for him to be acknowledged as a king. It was still time for him. He still had things he needed to do here on this earth. He still had to establish some things. He had to start setting up the church. He had to start building up the, the miracles and pointing people to the cross that he can go to. But now it's time. Throughout his ministry, he said, keep it quiet. But now he's saying it's time. It's time for us to recognize there is a king. There's a king in the game. There's a king in life. And we need to recognize who that king is. He says here in chapter 19, verse 28, it's when he had thus spoken, he went before ascending up to Jerusalem, and it came to pass that when he was come nigh to Bethphage and Bethany at the mount called the Mountain of Olives, he sent two of his disciples, saying, Go up into the village over against you, in which are your entering in which at your entering you shall find a coat tied, whereon yet neither man sat, loose him and bring him hither. And if any man ask you, why do you loose him? Thus shall you say unto him, because the Lord has need of him. That's pretty powerful. A coat. In a game of chess, we think about a pawn. Here's a coat. He said, but the Lord has a need. Has a need. I'm going to promise you, God created you. He formed you in his image. He made you the way you are. Everybody in this room is different. We all have our own unique characters. And here it come a time that the Lord had a need in his life. To do what? To recognize the king. The Lord today has a need for me. He has a need for you. And that need is to recognize the king. People in the world around us need to know who the king is. And he's going to use this young coat. He says he needs to be loosed. He needs to be brought to me. Because I have need of him. And they that were sent, they went their way and they found unto him what they, he said it would be. And as he had laid loose the coat, the owner thereof said unto him, Why loose you the coat? And he said, The Lord has need of him. Jesus knew where the coat was. Jesus doesn't know what the response of the owner of that coat would say. The Lord doesn't know all these things. You know why? Because he's the king. He's the king. He knows all things. 
Not only, he, he, he's all-knowing, he's all-powerful, he, he can control all things. He has authority. The king, the king. My brother, when we were young, growing up, a lot of time he'd come and maybe do something, get something. I said, you can't have that. Mama told me to come get it. The authority. I didn't want my brother to have it. But I sure ain't going to speak against my mama or my daddy because they had authority. The Lord has authority here today. He is the king. This Palm Sunday, we want to recognize the king. He said it's time that he is recognized. He needs to be recognized in our hearts, in the place that we worship, in our daily lives. He needs to be recognized. We need to understand all of life is all around the king. We acknowledge him today. He said he knew exactly what was going to happen. He said that the Lord had need of him. And they brought him to Jesus and they cast their garments upon the coat. And there they set Jesus thereupon and he went. And they spread their clothes in the way and when they were come nigh, even now at the descent of the mountain of olives, the whole multitude and the disciples began to rejoice and praise God with loud voices. For out of the mighty works that he had, they had seen, saying, Blessed be the King that cometh in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. They were singing. They were shouting. They were praising. They were acknowledging Him. And all the things that they were doing, they were telling about some great things that He'd done. Now I want us to think for just a moment. He is King. Is He King of your life? Can you acknowledge Him as King? Could you tell someone else some great marvelous thing that God has done for you? Think about it for just a moment. I'm thinking, one thing, I'm thinking, look, I was lost in my sins, and he saved me. He changed my heart. He changed my desires. I think about more recently, I think that God's done so much. He's blessed me with the family that I have, the home that I have, a place to worship, and, 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 and responsibility in the kingdom of God, acknowledging the king. But I think about this. It wasn't just long ago, just a few years ago, my mother became very sick. The doctor said she wasn't going to make it. She wasn't going to leave the hospital. But because of many prayers and many of your prayers, the Lord saw fit to extend her life beyond what doctors thought would be possible. And during that extension of two years of her life, she let me know that she had asked the Lord in her heart to save her. Oh, I'm telling you, that is a good thing to have in your heart, to know that your mama's in heaven. Not because she's a good person, not because she was good to me, but because she trusted in Jesus. I didn't have that assurance before that, but during that extension time, God gave me that. I am so thankful. It wasn't too long ago. If y'all remember, I, uh, I went in the hospital and they told me I had all these problems inside of me. I just knew I hurt. And I knew they come in and said, man, you got an abscess in your colon. They said, uh, man, that thing could burst and you'd have all kinds of problems. We need to go in next thing, first thing in the morning and get that out. And I go in the next morning and lo and behold, this doctor looks at me when he goes in to do the surgery and he said, it's not there anymore. It's gone. I know that's because of a lot of prayers that was put up for me and I appreciate those prayers. And look, God did that. God did that. I know that. I know that. God is good and God is great. And God does many things. What can we tell about the king today? Oh, he is marvelous. And it's all about the king. Oh, so many times churches and lives and our own personal lives, it's not about the king. It can be about uh, offerings. It can be about numbers. It can be about uh, comfort. It can be about what we want, what we like. But folks, it's all about the king. It's all about the king. We all worship the Lord differently, but most importantly, we worship the Lord. We worship the Lord. It ain't marvelous to watch these kids come in waving these little palm, these things. Oh, it, it, it's marvelous watching them. Folks, we need, the, the world needs to see the church doing the same thing, worshiping the king, worshiping the king, drawing attention, drawing attention. 
Isn't it amazing? You can be going home after church today, and all of a sudden you can come up. All of a sudden, traffic just backs up to a standstill, and you you thinking there's something terrible going on. I mean, it backed up, and all of a sudden it starts moving a little bit, moving a little bit. And I get up there, and I'm expecting some very big tragedy thing going on because of the the, the tension that it caused, and somebody's had a flat over on the side of the road, you know, or they run out of gas, and everybody's looking at them, you know. It's amazing how we can get a draw of attention to some minor thing here in life. It ain't amazing how we can get drawn to things that's really not important. But folks, we need to be drawn to something that's very important. We need to be drawn to the King of Kings. Blessed be the King. He said, not only as a king do you have honor and you have authority and power, but you have enemies. All kings have enemies. In the game of chess, there's enemies coming after him. It's our job to protect the king. It's our job to, to put up the defenses for the king. But he has enemies. And they sure don't need to be in the camp. We don't need to be saying, we've got him covered here and we're going to move out here to protect ourselves and let the king be sacrificed. It says in verse 39, it says, Some of the Pharisees from among the multitude said unto him, Master, Rebuke thy disciples. And he answered and said unto them, I tell you that if these should hold their peace, the stones would immediately cry out. I'm telling you, the Lord is going to be worshipped. What are we going to be doing in heaven? Let me tell you what we're going to do. We're going to be worshipping the king. We're going to be honoring the king. It's all about the king. It's not about our comfort and our desires. It's all about the king. We find joy when we honor the king. He said you want me to rejo- uh, rebuke these disciples for the, the attention they're bringing to Jesus? He said, look, I want to tell you, if these disciples won't do it, the Lord will bring up stones to do it. He's going to be recognized. Every knee shall bow. Every tongue shall confess. He's going to be acknowledged. He is king, and the world's going to know it. The world's going to know it. That's our job, to recognize the king. But there's enemies who don't like it. They don't acknowledge the king. They want to play checkers. They want to crown themselves. The Pharisees want to acknowledge their wisdom. Are we seeking crowns for ourselves? Are we seeking a crown for our Lord and King? He goes on to say, when he come near, he beheld the city and he wept over it. I'm telling you, not only does our king have power and authority, not only does he have enemies, but I'm telling you, he's got, a, he's got a good heart. He's got a good heart. He loves you. He looked down at this city, and he looked at this city, and he was heartbroken over this city. Because he knew what was coming of this city, because this city was not acknowledged him and putting the king where the king belonged in their hearts and their lives. He said, if thou hadst known, even thou at the least in this, t- this day, the things which belong unto, the pe- uh, uh, belong unto thy peace, but now they are laid, they are hid from thine eyes. I'm having a hard time focusing this morning. But he says, they don't understand. People in this world don't understand. If we don't put the king where he belongs, we're missing out on a lot of things. He goes on to say that this city is going to fall flat. The enemy is going to destroy them. Why? Because the king is not where he belongs in their lives. I assure you today, if we don't acknowledge the king, we're missing out on a lot of peace in our lives. We're missing out on a lot of victories in our lives. We need the king in his right perspective because today life is all about the king. Happiness is all about the king. Peace is all about the king. People will come to me and say, Preacher, you don't understand all my problems. I, I, I may not understand all your problems, but I understand the king. And I understand the king cares for you. The king watches out for you. But the king can't help you if he's not your king. We've got to make him our king today. If there's one here today that's never accepted him as their, your king today, he's heartbroken that he's not your king. It's not his fault. It's his, look, I'm telling you, you, you see all the bad things that happen in the world today? You think, where is God? God's heart, heartbroken too. 
because he's not the king of our state, our countries, our cities. He's not the king. In fact, we push him further and further and further back. The king needs to be in the center, in the forefront, first of all, in our personal lives. Oh, so much is missed out upon. And what else the king does? The king comes and cleans out the heart. He says in verse 45, Then he went into the temple and began to cast out them that sold therein. And he said, This is a house of prayer. He said, Sometimes it's time to do some cleaning. And we come, and I, I noticed uh, uh, the weather's getting warm and things are starting to bloom. And, you know, we're starting to raise those windows at our houses. And we're letting some fresh air in. And all of a sudden now we're starting to do some deep cleaning at the house. We do that spring cleaning. Spring cleaning. Let me know real quickly, I don't need to retire. I was off Friday, my wife worked me to death. I, I'm glad I got a job. <laughs> Spring cleaning. But folks, I think the same thing in our own hearts. Sometimes we've got to clean some things up. The Lord said the, the house of worship, the house of prayer had gotten away. He says it's time for the king to come in and use his authority and say, there's things in here that doesn't belong. And I believe before we take the Lord's Supper, he tells us we need to examine our own hearts and our lives because he is the king today. We acknowledge the Lord's Supper because he is king. We don't want to forget that he's king. But he says also, he has the authority to say, clean yourselves up. It tells us in God's word, people came together in the church to take to the Lord's Supper and they took it unworthily. Their hearts weren't clean. But we want to have an invitation before we take the Lord's Supper to, to make ourselves prepared, make ourselves ready. Make ourselves ready. Isn't it amazing? We'll, we'll go through a lot of effort to have company at our house. If we got company coming for dinner, we, we do a lot of cleaning. and We do a lot of preparation. And we try to get things ready. But folks, it begins in our own hearts. Is the king where it belongs in our life? Is our, is our hearts, is our lives, is our mind ready to receive the king today? I believe he would tell us there's things that doesn't belong. And as he convicts us, I think we follow him and put him where he belongs. Before we take the Lord's Supper, I'd like to have prayer and have a verse or two of invitation, but I challenge you. You're going to miss out on a lot of stuff if the king's not where he needs to be in your life. And sometimes we need to get ourselves ready to acknowledge his coming. Let's pray. Dear Lord, we're so thankful for you being our king, seeing fit to make us part of your kingdom. And I pray if there's one here that's never accepted you as Lord and Savior, I pray, Lord, that you deal with their hearts, and I pray that you give them courage to ask you in their hearts today to save them, to place you as king in their lives. I pray, Lord, that most of us here today have asked you that. But Lord, many times we, we've gotten out of the way and we haven't sacrificed as we should. But I pray, Lord, that we'll get our minds and our hearts in the game and prepare ourselves to watch after you, to represent you. And before we take the Lord's earth, I pray we examine our own hearts and our lives. In Jesus' name we pray and ask. Amen. Let's all stand.